let's talk about eye shapes. So this is going to be a two-part video because there's more to explain with eye shapes than you would actually think. So first we're going to talk about the actual with shape. With quotes like, the eyes are the window to the soul and countless other variations of that, it becomes very clear that as humans we have a fascination with the eyes. People try to classify such a complex anatomical feature into eye shape charts or tutorials on YouTube on how to know your eye shape, but this can often get confusing as these rough guides are not a comprehensive overview of all the different eye shapes out there. We can see in the comments, people still have trouble pinpointing exactly what their eyes can be characterized as. The fact of it is that the eyes are probably the most multifaceted feature in the face. This is why it's so rare to have two eyes that look alike. From facial recognition software to interpersonal relationships and communication, we always pick up on the eyes as uniquely being us. We've touched on eyes before in our video on why the eyes make or break a face and the differences between male and female eye shapes. Today, we'll break down what makes up an attractive eye shape and why. These vaguely pseudoscience TikToks and eye shape charts will be reinforced with detail from anthropometric facial analysis and cephalometric science or the studies of human facial proportions and measurements. Hopefully, this will help you better understand what kind of eyes you have and how to dress yourself according to it. Generally, almond eyes are preferred in both men and women, and we'll see why that is in just a moment. Almond eyes typically have a tighter lower lip shape, supported by fat, muscle, and underlying bone structure. In one such case study done by oculoplastic surgeon Daniel Ezra on almond eyes, he notes that all of these different eye shapes are actually mainly due to the morphology of the mid-face and nature of the eye sockets themselves. Thus, when people go to get a blepharoplasty or an eye lift, they're really just trying to replicate the almond eye look. If one does not have the proper mid-face support, then the results of such a bandage operation will likely not last. Ezra makes note of a patient having a positive orbital vector, meaning good mid-face bone prominence, which will lead to better long-term retainment of the lift lid. The tighter retracted eyelid look is naturally achieved through prominent support of maxillary bones, including the zygomatic bones, which are your cheekbones, infraorbital bones, which are your eye socket bones, and some other ones not to mention. Ezra notes how difficult it is to truly replicate the curvatures and shapes that result in almond eyes. Without that support, you get a droopier, tired appearance with less eye upturn and other undesirable features. Those lacking mid-face bones tend to have more scleral show or apparent white of the eye, and in this before and after we can see the transition from a lax lower eyelid and scleral show to the eye lift version with less scleral show. The TikTok video associates round eyes with this scleral show and almond eyes with no scleral show. It is not that black and white, but usually almond eyes do have minimal scleral show due to elevated mid-face bone support. The reason why scleral show is even significant in aesthetics, as you may have guessed from this, is because it makes the eyes look more tired and droopy, as if you're in an internal fight with your own eyelids. The most common surgery worldwide in 2013, according to the ISAPS, the International Study on Aesthetic and Cosmetic Procedures, was an eyelid surgery and the western leader in cosmetic surgeries, the US, was no exception. Still, eastern countries like South Korea also favor eyelid surgeries for slightly different reasons where in their case it's more so to remove the monolith or the epicanthic fold and expose more of the eyes for a larger eye look. The aesthetic goals of most Koreans and East Asians in general is not usually to lift the lower lid but to alter the monolid and about half of the Asian population does possess this characteristic feature. Almond eyes being arguably the most attractive eye shape is more so a western beauty phenomena that's especially apparent in the states, while rounder more feminine eye shapes with less angularity are preferred by eastern beauty culture. This hunter eye look, as the layman would term it, with a shapely raised lower eyelid, higher eye width to height ratio, produces more narrow angular eye areas. This follows the trends we see in eastern beauty culture being almost opposite to that in western culture, with larger rounded eyes, smaller face shapes, v-shaped jaws, and softer brow regions being usually preferred. It should come as no surprise then that more rounded eyes with less protrusive bones around the ocular region are attractive in eastern beauty culture because they emphasize on a less overbearing bone structure, it's more feminizing. If prominent maxilla facial growth or growth around the mid-face is not a key factor in eastern culture, then that will translate to the appearance of the eye area. 
Their eyes will be less hunter-like with minimal brow bone protrusion and orbital bone prominence. Even the position of the eyebrows will reflect this as it is connected to the shape and protrusion of the bone above the eye. The resulting product will be a face that is more neotinous or juvenile looking and considerably more feminized. I always give the example to compare the features of Disney's Bambi to say Scar in The Lion King. Take a closer look to see how their eyes are drawn and how we can associate one as being the good guy and the other as the bad. One of the characteristics that often accompany almond eyes is a downturned medial canthus or that sharp inner corner of the eye. It's no surprise women try to accentuate this through eyeliner to give the illusory cat-like appearance. In a study performed by Bashore and Geist titled Is Medial Canthal Till a Powerful Cue for Facial Attractiveness, it was concluded that female faces almost always were preferred with accentuated medial canthuses. The reason ties into the tilt of the eyes when the inner corner is lowered, the angle from the inner to outer corner or the canthal tilt becomes larger. More positively tilted eyes within reason are associated with femininity and increased attractiveness but also with better dentofacial structure as they don't droop or sag due to maxillary or mid-face deficiencies. Even in men, having greater canthal tilt was almost universally preferred over having less canthal tilt with upturned eyes where they appear to be drooping downwards. So it's no surprise that eyeliner and the shapes that we associate with eyeliner are there to accentuate the length of the eye and make the actual degree of tilt that your eyes do have more noticeable by making the length longer. Much like the lever arm in a seesaw, the longer it is, the greater the angle it takes off the ground. A defined medial canthus can also add angularity to the eye like a feline, although not to that extent. Round eyes will typically lack this defined inner eye corner and have less positive canthal tilt as a result of what's known as rotational symmetry. Try rotating a circle and tell me if it looks any different. Downturned eyes refer to a negative canthal tilt, or the angle where the inner eye corner and outer eye corner is below zero. Straight is about zero and upturned eyes have an angle that is noticeably greater than zero. However, canthal tilt can vary a lot between individuals and racial groups and we have covered the exact values and how this is measured in our older videos but a general gist is that East Asians have the highest canthal tilt and Africans have some of the lowest. The incel community seems to heavily focus on canthal tilt and it's a, it's a bit strange because the degree of tilt doesn't actually really matter as long as your eyes are above zero, it's not really indicative of any sort of dentofacial deformity. More aptly put, as long as your eyes are within the range for your attractive racial group counterparts, then you're more than less fine. Deep set eyes require mid-face bone support but also forward growth of the brow bone and supraorbitals or bones above the eye. It is that relationship between the bones above and below the eye being more forward than the eye itself that creates that deep set contour. Typically more deep set eyes will be found in men as they just have more protrusive brow bones, but having a prominent mid-face region can also help to achieve deep set eyes for women because the mid-face region is not based on testosterone ornamentation, it's more so based on healthy facial development. And so having a prominent and well-developed mid-face is not biased towards either sex. For the same reasons, deep set eyes have typically been considered attractive from an evolutionary point of view because they have surrounding bone support that have been helpful in the past to provide what's known as facial buttressing. We've covered this on our beauty podcast in the deep dive section, so you should probably want to learn about that, but also bulging eyes have negative associations with being bug-like, and the reasons for this is because it indicates a negative orbital vector, meaning that your under eye region is very, very weak. Again, from an evolutionary point of view, that's not a benefit that puts you at risk of getting your eyes gouged out, but also just shows poor facial development. You will commonly see the eyes being classified as closer or wide set by the layman, and this is often known as hypo or hypertellerism. Even without understanding cephalometric markers, people are surprisingly good at picking out changes in eye separation. Thompson notes how one example of this exquisite performance is our ability to discriminate differences in the lateral separation of the eyes in pairs of otherwise identical faces. We can tell them that someone's eyes are just a little bit too close or a little bit too far apart and just how important this characteristic is was made evident through the ruthless bullying of a TikToker on her interpupillary distance being extremely high. She was just being barraged with rude comments and jokes about her eye separation. Obviously we're not going to show her but it does go to show even a simple proportion can simply throw off one's facial harmony. 
Perhaps the most important factor in an eye area is eye spacing. Even without the most striking eye shape, a harmonious eye spacing can lead to pleasant looking eyes. Justin is an example of this and he does not have perfect eye spacing. The common trope is that the eyes should be one eye width apart, and any more than that means that wider eyes are present, or any less would mean that closer eyes are present. This is a good place to start, but it will not apply to everyone. For instance, in this comment, clearly the eye spacing can look different even being one eye apart. We covered this in our video on facial harmony using the circle of prominence theory. Ex-basketball player Marco Jarek has extremely close her eyes, but they don't appear to be too far off from that one eye apart standard. Even if they were spaced slightly apart, they would still look very off, and that's just because his face is so large in comparison to his eye shape. This is where interpupillary distance as a percentage of the total facial width comes into play. The distance between the pupils should be normally about 45-47% to of the facial width, and anything extremely outside of that range will negatively affect facial harmony. It's no surprise that Marco's eyes are about 40% of his facial width. Anya Taylor-Joy is an example of wide set eyes being one eye apart, and her eyes make up over 50% of her facial width, and as you can imagine, having large eyes that are very prominent on the face is an extremely feminizing feature. So to truly tell if your eyes are wide set or close set, it's best to use both the one eye test and the eye separation ratio. The most attractive eyes will have to be the eyes that are one eye apart and about 46% of the facial width. Elaine Dion, Henry Cavill, Killian Murphy, Romy Stryd, Megan Fox, Boderick Hunter, and Sento Ramamurthy are all great examples of this and there's no surprise there. Interestingly enough, most of these attractive eye areas have a sharp and downturned medial canthus and almond eyes as well. It is no coincidence that the most desirable traits tend to come in groups where deep set eyes, upturned almond eyes with minimal to no scleral show and harmonious eye spacing seems to be the standard in a hyper attractive face that gives the perceptions of facial dominance. Even then, what makes your eyes identifiably you may just be having downturned eyes or more wide set eyes. After all, we are not all uniform robots and the best thing we can have for ourselves are the eyes that are unique from everyone else. Eye shape does matter, but trying to box yourself into one category likely won't do you any good. Instead, use the videos on our channel to learn about whether you have more feminine, masculine, and androgynous face, and then accentuate your features, your style, your clothing, the way you act, your hairstyle even, to best suit that facial aesthetic. Not really about changing the way you look, but rather accentuating what you already have. That is generally our first recommendation with the patients who come into us for a facial aesthetic report, and identifying the aesthetic, the archetype their face falls into, and then accentuating the changes made as a result of that to fit that archetype. So for instance, Anya Taylor-Joy can never really convincingly play the role of a masculine femme fatale in a movie, because her eye features, her Overall facial archetype is just far too feminine and neotenous. But in Queen's Gambit, she played an excellent casting as a capable and determined young woman in an otherwise previously male-dominated sport, as the girlish underdog. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about facial aesthetics, we have so many resources over at the curves.com website. We have podcasts, we have videos, we also have articles written by our medical team, Dr. Sony and Dr. Mahmoud. Also, the Curves Deep Dive podcast is now for free on Spotify and Apple Music, Google Podcast, everything, all platforms, and I would definitely recommend checking it out. It's very much what we covered in these videos in greater depth with 30 minute long segments using the Socratic method of just asking why in every question to really get to the bottom of why we find certain features attractive, why dating preferences are the way they are and discussing other tenets of beauty like dimorphism, averageness, and the nuances that play into how they're actually perceived. Lastly, if you would like to get a facial aesthetic report and have your face analyzed in the way that we analyze faces on this channel, you can go to the Coves services page and order a report there. It's written by a team of doctors and dentists, and after the report, you can ask as many questions as you want to get clarifications on what you should do next to have your next big glow up. As always, follow us on Instagram and TikTok. We have unique content that's specific to those platforms. <laughs>